Yeah. In the car. In September 2008, National Geographic cameraman Bob Poole arrived in Gorongosa National Park, Mozambique. Immediately, he was awed by Gorongosa's beauty. But he also knew making a film here would be a serious challenge. You get up and you fly around a place like Gorongosa and it just looks fantastic. And you see, oh man, there's hippos there, or look, there's elephants over here, or there's, my God, you know, a herd of buffalo, look at that down there. But then, you know, you get down on the ground and suddenly it's just all you can see is tall grass and bush and forests and it's very difficult on the ground. Soon, Poole began to crack the Gorongosa code and find prime locations for filming the park's spectacular wildlife. Well, there's a wonderful place in Gorongosa called the Songwe River where the lake was actually drying up and all the fish were sort of running out of water and all the birds that eat fish were just able to pick them off and it, was, it, it gave us you know, incredible opportunity for filming, especially with the high-speed camera where you could actually sit and anticipate that an eagle was going to swoop down and grab a fish or a heron was going to stab one. This is the place to be if you're a bird. To capture the action in slow motion, the team used a state-of-the-art, high-definition camera called the Phantom. Phantom camera operator Andy Casagrande joined Poole to film the feeding frenzy. The Phantom shoots incredibly high frame rate. In other words, it can shoot up to 1,500 frames a second. This camera shoots 30 frames a second. It's pretty awesome. You just gotta make sure you're really sharp and he catch this super fast action as it happens. Andy's footage is just unbelievable. You know, he's got eagles swooping down to catch fish at, at 500 frames a second. And it's just magic, you know? And it's the same with water, you know, when you see the waterfalls and water just dropping like this, you know, backlit beautiful water captured in super slow motion. It's just extraordinary and it adds so much to the film. Poole's next challenge was to film the park's numerous but skittish crocodiles. We knew from the beginning we needed to have a lot of crocodile behavior in this film. The challenge in filming crocodiles is that they key on movement. So unless you are absolutely dead still and somewhat camouflaged, then the, your chances of filming crocodiles are pretty hopeless in Gorongosa. What I did was I set this hide up on a, on a beach where these crocodiles came to bask during the day and there was hundreds of crocodiles and I just went and set the hide up early in the morning and then sat there motionlessly and absolutely dead quiet until all these crocodiles came back out on the beach and at that point I was surrounded by these monsters but you know knowing full well that if I stood up and went boo they'd all run back into the water. Filming crocs on a basking beach was difficult enough but he had got the shots. To complete the croc story, he needed to film a mother digging up her nest and releasing her hatchlings. He returned in December 2008 for hatching season. From the beginning, we started looking for a nesting beach, and we found what we thought would be perfect, but of course, we didn't really know. Day after day, I sat in this hide at the edge of the river, waiting for these crocodiles to dig up their nests and it never happened, day after day after day. And finally I had to stop. I couldn't keep putting that much time into getting one shot. So I left and carried on doing other things. Poole reluctantly gives up on the croc nest. But days later, driving through the bush, he gets a lucky cell phone call. We're in a place in Gorongosa, they're really, the communication is tough. Cell phones work in some small places, and it just happened that there was a tiny, tiny signal. And my phone rang, and I was able to get to it, and it was Jonathan, and he's like, come to the nesting beach right now. It must have taken us half an hour to get there, 20 minutes anyway. And by the time we got there, she was still in the process of digging up, and I was in a panic, and I got the camera into, and I got set up as quick as I can. I just started rolling, and I think I rolled for a half an hour while she, and it was fantastic because she was, she, you know, 
she would dig up the nest and the babies would come out of their eggs and she'd put them in her mouth and she'd fill her mouth full of baby crocodiles and then she would climb down to the river and go into the river and then let them go. It was so amazing because after all that time and thinking, oh darn, we're not going to get this, you know, we're never going to get it. And then we ended up getting it. It was just, it was just fantastic. Having finally filmed the croc nesting scene he came for, Poole turns his lens on elephants. He has spent a large part of his career filming elephants. His sister Joyce is a highly respected elephant biologist. So he was particularly keen to meet and film Gorongosa's giants. Those elephants suffered a lot of trauma in their life because they've lived through the Civil War. And the elephants that are there today, older elephants, are the survivors of that war. To film elephants there, you pretty much have to not be noticed. And we were looking for elephants. We needed more footage of elephants. And we ended up driving through tall grass and through forest and getting downwind from these elephants so they couldn't smell us. And they can't see that well, but they can smell and hear very well. We were able to film for quite a while and they kept coming closer and closer and closer. Poole is able to get amazing close-ups of Gorongosa's elephants, but suddenly they're too close for comfort. Now suddenly they're, they're too close to actually try to move because you're, you start the car and then they're right there and they suddenly realize you're there and you know so the wind's blowing out as they don't know we're there and then suddenly the wind shifts and they got our scent. Be dangerous. Yeah, it was quite tense actually because they, there was a big herd of them. They were quite close together and when they suddenly realized that we, we were somewhere they couldn't see us then they got quite nervous and they started moving back and forth and we were thinking god you know if they just decide to come this way and don't realize we're here and then suddenly they're on us so there was a little bit of heart pounding there just once Poole managed to film Gorongosa's elephants without them knowing he was there, and the experience proved to be a memorable one. So I'd gone to a special place that was called Paradise Pan, and I sat and waited, and suddenly a small family group came out of the forest, and the sun was just setting, and it was beautiful backlight on these elephants, and they had no idea I was there. They were walking along the edge of the pan through the forest, and it was very green, but it was also very sort of warm light because of the way the sun was shining through the trees. They never detected me. I was close by, but I never felt in any way threatened. I was all by myself and it was quiet and peaceful and it was the best close encounter I had with elephants the whole time I was there in Gorongosa. It was really special. The final piece of the puzzle was to show Gorongosa in all its glory during wet season from the air. For this, the crew used a powerful filming weapon, the Cineflex. On our third shoot in Gorongosa, we brought in the real, real heavy duty equipment. We brought in a Cineflex. And the Cineflex is this wonderful piece of equipment that sits on the front of a helicopter and it totally gyro stabilizes a big long lens. And it's basically like having the most stable tripod you could ever have, but in the air. So we were able to do these shots wrapping around waterfalls and getting tight shots of elephants on the ground and then big, big wide shots of birds and seeing the whole place. It's really a very remarkable piece of equipment and it was just critical that we had it in Gorongosa. I'm going to test it with my body weight. And if it holds me, it ought to hold the camera. So I feel pretty cool. has traveled the world over, filming the most extraordinary wildlife scenes imaginable. They're carrying termites. These are metabili ants. But after several months of filming here, the timeless magic of Gorongosa has bewitched the wildlife cameraman. One thing about making a film like this, you sort of come to a place, you discover it, you kind of learn it, and then you 
really get involved in it and you get to know the place and you get to know the people that are working there and and it it becomes sort of a part of your life i really enjoyed my time there i'd really like to spend more time there and uh, i hope someday i will be able to go back and do some more I think what's happening in Gorongosa is absolutely fantastic. And I'm so personally thrilled that I was able to be the cinematographer of this film because to me it's also very, very important.